Hi gang! I wanted to add some more things to my BB-8 droid version 2, but was running out of room inside the ball. So I decided to replace the bulky remote control receiver that I'd taken from a toy truck, along with the circuit board I'd made for it, with a nice small HC05 Bluetooth board. And for the remote control, I thought I'd use my Android phone. First, connecting the HC05 board to the Arduino Uno. This is the HC05 Bluetooth board, which I bought off eBay. It allows me to communicate wirelessly from my phone to the board using Bluetooth. The HC05 board gets wired to the Arduino and talks to the Arduino using serial. Here's the circuit. The HC05 has a 5 volt pin for power, which I connect to the Arduino's 5 volt pin, and a ground pin, which I connect to the Arduino's ground pin. The transmit, or TX, and receive, or RX pins are what are used for talking to the Arduino using serial. I want to keep the Arduino's hardware serial transmit and receive pins, digital pins 0 and 1, for debugging purposes. For that reason I'm using the Arduino's software serial library instead, for communicating with the HC05 board. I'm connecting the HC05's TX, or transmit pin, to the Arduino's digital pin 2, which will be the RX, or receive pin, from the Arduino's perspective. And I'm connecting the HC05's RX, or receive pin, to the Arduino's digital pin 4 which will be the TX, or transmit pin, from the Arduino's perspective. But the Arduino can transmit on pin 4 using 5 volts, and the HC05's RX pin can handle only up to 3.3 volts. So I create a voltage divider using some resistors. Here's how that works. Between pin 4 and ground will be 5 volts, but between them I put two resistors, a 1 kilo ohm resistor and a 2 kilo ohm resistor, for a total resistance of 3 kilo ohms. Two thirds of the resistance is across this resistor, and so two-thirds of the voltage, or 3.3 volts, will be across that resistor. And so I put the HC05 across there, where there's only 3.3 volts, across its RX and ground pins. The very same thing is going on in the diagram here. It's just harder to see that that's what's going on. Oh, and I chose the Arduino's pins 2 and 4 because they're not PWM, or pulse width modulation pins. That way I save the PWM pins for something else, should I need them. I've also added an LED for diagnosing problems in the field in the future. Whenever the Arduino has received a command to do something, other than stop the motors, then it'll turn on the LED. If it receives a stop command, then it'll turn off the LED. I have the usual protective resistor, and I've put it on digital pin 5, so I can use the PWM, pulse width modulation, to make it dimly lit so as not to use much power. Before tearing out the RC receiver and making a permanent board for the HC05, I start by putting it all on a breadboard for testing. Next comes writing the Android app for doing the remote control. To write that, I'm using MIT's App Inventor, which you can get to at this address. You'll need a Google account to use it. If it was your first time using it, then you'd use either of these links to set it up, so you can either use your phone or an emulator, so that you can see what your app looks like as you go along. I've already done that, basically loading an app onto my phone, so I'll skip it. I'll just give a quick demo to give you an idea of what goes on. To create your first project, click on Start New Project. Give it a name. Then start dragging things for the user interface part of the app. I'm starting with the spacer at the top, then another for holding a list picker, then the list picker. This list picker will have an image on it, which I've already drawn using GIMP. I'll call it the Bluetooth list, since it's what the user will touch in order to get a list of Bluetooth devices to connect to, like the HC05 board. Then I'll add a Bluetooth client, which won't appear in the user interface. To see it on the phone as I go along, as I've said, I already clicked on those links I showed you at the beginning, so I just connect using a QR code. Now when I change something in the App Inventor, I see a change on the phone too. But I'll stop designing there and jump ahead. To do the necessary programming, you click on Blocks to switch to the Blocks view. I start by clicking on my Bluetooth list object to get a list of relevant blocks. I drag out a block that will do something when the list picker has been touched, but before the user has selected a Bluetooth device. This is so that we can set the elements in the list. Then, for after they've picked from the list, We'll try to connect to whatever device they've selected. If the connection was successful, then we'd do something, and so on. You get the idea. Here's the completed design. And here it is on the phone. This button is for connecting to the HC05 board. 
But don't forget to pair the HC05 Bluetooth to your phone before you do this. And these buttons are for sending commands to the HC05 to tell the Arduino to control the BB-8's motors. And here's the completed blocks, or code. This sets up the list of Bluetooth devices to pick from. And this processes the selection by trying to connect to the HC05 board. And then displaying on the phone whether or not the connection succeeded. And then the rest is just what to do when tapping on various motor control buttons. They're almost identical. These are what we named the buttons in the design. And these are the one byte numbers, or commands, that will be sent to the HC05 board and that the Arduino will process. And speaking of Arduinos, here's the Arduino code. We do this include, since we're going to use software serial to communicate between the Arduino and the HC05 board. These are the pins on the Arduino that we're connecting the HC05 to. These are the same one byte command values that you saw us sending in the app's block code. This is the pin for the LED we added for diagnosing problems. This next stuff all came from the previous version of this code and deals with the H-bridge boards and motors. It includes functions for turning the motors off, or clockwise, or counterclockwise. In the setup function, we do some H-bridge and motor stuff. Then we prepare the LED pin and the software serial's baud rate. Finally, in the loop function, each time it's called, we check if there's any command from the phone app, which comes in through the HC05 board and the software serial. We read the command. Then we go into a big, extremely simple switch handling whatever command it is by doing something appropriate to the two motors. We also turn on the LED if the motors are being made to rotate, or turn off the LED if we receive the command to stop both motors. We're using a very low pulse width modulation value of just 20 out of a possible 256, or around 8% duty cycle. We don't need to light it brightly, and keeping it dim won't drain the battery needlessly. In MIT's Inventor App Developer, you can import projects. On my website about adding the HC05 board to my BB-8 version 2, you can find the project. You can also find an icon for using on your phone for the app. And lastly, the Arduino code is also all there. Click on the card or use the link in the description to get to the web page. And here we're testing it while still in breadboard form. It works great. Next, I remove all the old remote control receiver hardware, including the converter board I designed. I move the Arduino's battery down under the drive plate, keeping the heavier stuff as low as possible to minimize wobble. I used a perf board to prepare a simple circuit board for the HC05. Notice that I used two 1 kilo ohm resistors in series to get 2 kilo ohms, since I didn't have a 2 kilo ohm one. And here's how I laid it out on the perf board, in case you want to do it too. I put it in its place. I connect the wire for the LED, as well as for the HC05's receive and transmit. Then I go to the back of the Arduino and connect them to pin 5 for the LED and pins 4 and 2 for the HC05 receive and transmit. Then I connect the ground to the Arduino. The 5 volt pin on the Arduino already goes to the inertial management unit board, but in case I'd need more 5 volt connections later, I put an extra 5 volt slot there. So I connect it to there. A tie strap makes it all pretty. A quick test shows that it works. I lower it all into the ball and close it up. I find which way is forward. Then I put the head on. And here it is in action. Well, thanks for watching. See my YouTube channel for more fun and informative videos like this. You can support these videos either through Patreon or through a one-time donation. And if you like these videos, don't forget to subscribe, give a thumbs up, share with your social media, or leave a question or comment below. See you soon.